TGS, it's Miss Solomon, and I'm back to you with the tale of Despero. And we are on chapter 19, Light, Light Everywhere. Imagine, if you will, having spent the whole of your life in a dungeon, imagine that late one spring day, you step out of the dark and into a world of bright windows and polished floors winking copper pots and shining suits of armor and tapestries sewn into gold. Imagine, and while you are imagining things, imagine this too. Imagine that at the same time, the rat steps from the dungeon and into the castle, a mouse is being born upstairs, a mouse reader who is destined to meet the light bedazzled rat. But that meeting will occur much later and for now, the rat is nothing but happy, delighted, amazed to find himself standing in so much light. I said of Roscaro, spinning dizzily from one bright thing to the next, I will never leave. No, never. I will never go back to the dungeon. Why would I? I will never torture another prisoner. It is here that I belong. The rat waltzed happily from room to room until he found himself at the door uh, to the banquet hall. He looked inside and saw gathered there King Philip, Queen Rosemary, and the Princess P. Twenty noble people, a juggler, four minstrels, and all the king's men. This pantry reader was a sight for a rat's eyes. Roscoe had never seen happy people. He had known only the miserable ones. Think he, he lived in a dungeon, right? Gregory the jailer and those who were consigned to his domain did not laugh or smile or clink glasses with the person sitting next to them. Roscaro was enchanted. Everything glittered, everything. The gold spoons on the table and the jingle bells on the juggler's cap, the strings on the minstrel's guitars and the crowns on the king's and the queen's backs. And the little princess, how lovely she was, how much like light itself. Her gown was covered in sequins that winked and glimmered at the rat. And when she laughed, and she laughed often, everything around her seemed to glow brighter. Oh, really, said Roscoe, this is too extraordinary. This is too wonderful. I must tell Botticelli that he was wrong. Suffering is not the answer. Light is the answer. And he made his way into the banquet hall. He lifted his tail off the ground and held it at an angle and marched in time to the music the minstrels were playing on their guitars. The rat reader invited himself to the party. Now that's in the chapter 19. Let's continue on to chapter 20 because that was short. Chapter 20 is called A View from a Chandelier. There was in the banquet hall a most beautiful and ornate chandelier. The crystals that hung from it caught the light of the candles on the table and the light from the face of the laughing princess. They danced to the rhythm of the minstrel's music, swaying back and forth, twinkling and beckoning. What a better place to view all of this glory, all of this beauty. There was so much laughing and singing and juggling that no one noticed as Roscoe crawled up a table leg and onto the table and from there flung himself onto the lowest branch of the chandelier. Oh my gosh, a rat. No, Brooklyn, you can't come over here. Hanging by one paw, he swung back and forth, admiring the spectacle below him, the smells of the food, the sound of the music, and the light, the light, the light. Amazing, unbelievable. Roscoe smiled and shook his head. Unfortunately, a rat can hang from the chandelier for only so long before he is discovered. This would be true at even the loudest party. Reader, do you know who it was that spotted him? You're right, 3JS. The sharp-eyed Princess P. A rat, she shouted. A rat is hanging from the chandelier. The party, as I have noted, was loud. The minstrels were strumming and singing. The people were laughing and eating. The man with the jingle cap was juggling and jingling. No one in the midst of all this merriment heard the pee. No one except for Roscaro. Rat! He had never before been aware of what an ugly word it was. <laughs> Here's a picture. You have to see it. There's Roscoe hanging from the chandelier. 
A rat, she shouted. A rat is hanging from the chandelier. Rats, in the middle of all that beauty, it immediately became clear that it was an extremely distasteful syllable. Rat. A curse. An insult. A word totally without light. And not until he heard it from the mouth of the princess did Roscoe realize that he did not like being a rat. That he did not like being, uh, did not want to be a rat. He, this revelation hit Roscoe with such force that it made him lose his grip on the chandelier. The rat reader fell. And alas, he fell right directly into the queen's bowl of soup. That's the end of chapter 20. And tomorrow, I mean Monday, I'll read you chapter 21. Bye, 3JS.